Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to do a little how-to and that's going to be on building your own servo. So what I have here is uh, from a company Fatboy RC and this is the uh, rat tail build your own servo kit and so what's going to claim is have 3s power at 600 ounce inches. So it should be everything in here to uh, build your own servo. Uh, it should be a lot of fun so right, let's just get started. All right, so, so far I'm pretty impressed. Uh, there appears to be just about everything you would need inside this to uh, put it together. You have uh, Permatex, uh, Corrosion X, I guess for uh, the circuitry here, uh, Marine Grease, uh, really nice uh, aluminum case. It looks like it's um, possibly bead blasted. It's got that uh, texture, but it really, really looks nice. I think it should uh, go together really, uh, yeah, it should look pretty nice like that. And, uh, you know, assortment of screws and, and other odds and ends, and most importantly, the instructions. So uh, I'm going to be going through these page by page, and hopefully uh, this won't be too, uh, too bad to put together. All right, let's just uh, see if we can get this thing working. So what I'm doing here is applying uh, the tape to the servo case, and the reason why is that they want this thing to be waterproof, but they don't have a custom O-ring like a lot of the servos would that would go in between each of these layers and, and really provides the dust slash waterproofing for the servo. So the, the compromise is just to put a uh, Permatex, you know, a gasket sealant in between each layer. And this tape is there to uh, keep that Permatex from, you know, getting onto the outside of the case and just making it more difficult to clean up later. So it's a little bit of a fiddly process of getting the tape lined up and, you know, just like pretty much like taping, um, you know, taping for a paint job. You don't have to get be that precise because it's just, the Permatex will rub off the outside of the case. You just kind of, you know, roll it with your finger a little bit once you put it together. But, um, but this just makes it where it's a little bit less uh, of a cleanup later. So that completes the step two and then getting on to the uh, step three and, and then working my way through the uh, instructions. And so that is uh, getting this potentiometer uh, pushed into the bottom of the case. And right here I'm just lining it up to make sure that everything uh, is fitting and all the, the notches are in, in place. It's kind of a, a recessed area where this uh, potentiometer sits. So the potentiometer sits in that recess, and that's really what keeps it from uh, moving side to side. And that's where the, the, you know, the lateral loads are, not so much pushing straight down. So what they just have is these two small screws which go on either side of the potentiometer. And the edge of the screw just basically catches that potentiometer, it keeps it from backing out. And um, so, it, you know, it's not a, a, you don't need a whole lot of force to hold these things in. And uh, but you know it's just enough to keep them from uh, kind of working their way back out of that uh, that little groove in the bottom. There we 
we get to the last uh, little screw in here and uh, get this thing ready to move on to the next, putting the uh, circuit board in. So the next step is the uh, circuit board. And this part I was a little bit worried about. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to be building a circuit board, but you know, it comes with the motor, the circuit board, the wires, everything attached. So that 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 makes it really nice. And they also provide this uh, corrosion X. I've never used this before, so it looked like a pretty messy process. So I you know donned the the black gloves, and it almost looks like a grease. You just take this little applicator. And they give instructions on where to paint this stuff on. You paint it right on the circuit board. And, you know, a little bit around the top of the motor. And uh, just kind of in between where the motor and the circuit board are uh, are meeting. And, you know, you, you don't want uh, too much of this. But just enough to make sure that everything's coated really well. And so yeah, just a little bit around the end of the uh, motor shaft there. Not 100% sure of the uh, what that would be for, but you know, I'm trying to follow the instructions as best as possible, and that's where they say to put it, so that's where I put it. So now it's time to put the uh, Permatex on and get the uh, first, you know, joint sealed up, and that's going to be where the wires come out. Of the case and this is the point where I'm finding out that uh, there's something wrong uh, with this Permatex and at first I thought okay this the tip of the uh, of the Permatex is dried up and, and I have to break that tip off and then I can go again but I guess this kit has been sitting around for a while and um, that Permatex pretty much went rock hard solid in that uh, little syringe they provided there so this is pretty much the point I decided, well, this is not going to be a waterproof case. So moving on, and I'm just going to have to deal with that. So this uh, circuit board with the motor, that just slots right in and um, in the case. And before I do that, you know, I want to pull off all this tape. It just gets in the way, and uh, it's always fun to do that with, uh, you know, rubber gloves on. So you get the, the motor slotted in and there's the little um, little grommet that goes in a notch and you just got to make sure that's good and seated and that, uh, that contains the wires. So as per the instructions you, uh, you put the little more corrosion X on the bottom of the circuit board and so now you'd have it on the top around the motor and on the bottom so the whole circuit board should be, should be protected. Um, you know, they, like I said, it's not going to be waterproof or dustproof, but these are pretty tight seals. And you know, unless you're taking it in a in the a river or you know you're beating it down a dusty road, you should be okay. So here, putting on the the base, and you know, the first thing you got to remember is to actually get it aligned properly. There is a notch in that case, so you flip it around, and that lines up with that little. Uh, grommet that holds the wires and just pops into place and then has uh, four screws that go right into the bottom. It is uh, really nice that they've uh, used these um, hex screws pretty much throughout and uh, a lot of the a lot of the servos you'll get have the the Phillips head and it's just it's just to me it's just aggravating that almost everything on the um, RC car is hex and then all of a sudden you go to this thing and now they have Phillips screws so you got to keep you know more screwdrivers in your your bag if you're on the you know if you're on the trail it just makes it makes it more difficult to carry more stuff around so it's nice to have um, fewer tools to work on this this servo so a little bit of a uh, blue Loctite just to hold the uh, screws in place since it is uh, going into an aluminum case I just didn't want those to back out So getting into step nine is where we're starting to uh, build up the the gearing on top. 
And so the first thing I have you do is take this corrosion X and then put more corrosion X. Pretty much just paint the whole bottom of the, um, of the underside where the gears go. I'm not sh exactly sure how effective or how much you know this is really needed, but just just following along with instructions and doing what they're saying, trying to put this thing together the best I can with following their instructions. So the first gear that goes in is um, has this pin, and it's a really really long pin that pops out of the top of the gear, and there's only a, a small amount that goes in the bottom. So it's going to look odd that you have so much of a pin com coming out the top, and it and it's a little bit uh, fiddly to get that th thing into that very small recess, um, but it but it is correct. So just be aware when you're putting this in, you know that the pin sticks out of the top a pretty good bit and it's a little bit fiddly to get it to find that little uh, hole where it goes in and get it seated well but just kind of work at it and you'll get there The one thing I thought was really nice when I first opened the kit was having all these uh, parts in individual bags. But you know, about this point is when I started realizing this is absolutely a lot of bag opening. So it makes it nice. You don't have to measure any of the screws. You don't have to be concerned. But um, it's a little bit of a pain just constantly opening these bags for like two screws. So here is some uh, marine grease. So this is going to be for the uh, gearing itself. I'm uh, just taking a little uh, tongue depressor and trying to get uh, a fair amount onto that gear because uh, that thing's going to be buried pretty soon. So I wanted to make sure there was a good amount of, of grease on there. You don't want too much, but you you do want enough. So so again, another another little pin uh, will go in and uh, a gear on uh, top of that. So this one's a little bit smaller and, um, you know, looks, it doesn't look so odd because it doesn't stick out the top like this other one. So um, a little bit easier to get in. And when, you, when you're putting these, these gears on, you just, they're going to, for the most part, line up. But just, just take your time to make sure the mesh is lining up. And then you'll give them a spin around and, and then move that grease from one gear to the other and make sure all the teeth are you know well coated and uh, you have a lot of you know an adequate amount of grease spread across all the teeth of, the, of this uh, servo here so this is a little bit of a special gear it has a, a like a rectangular notch that's cut into the base of the gear um, and it also lines up with that potentiometer that which has the um, matching uh, rectangular post coming out of it. So you have to get that those two um, pushed together. But you also have to get there's a, a the pin that's mounted onto this gear uh, oriented toward the outside of the servo. And what that pin does is it rises up into the case into the 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 lid of where this the you know, gears are rise in, the, in a little track and that's what keeps the um, gear from just spinning round and round so you'll notice that a servo only goes so far in one direction and so far in the other and that's what that little pin does so here is uh, another gear and a uh, bearing and so I, you know, I pop the bearing onto the um, the end of the the gear that's coming off the potentiometer, and soon I'm going to realize that the other gear has to live underneath this bearing, and it, it can't pass by with that bearing in place. I think a lot of these, if they have the bearing, and it's not a bushing or something, uh, typically are stuck up inside the case, and so when you're putting the gear on, the, the bearing is not there. So just as simple of you know pulling the pulling the gear off, um, pulling the bearing back off, slide the gear on first, and then just slide the bearing on top, and everything's good then. A 
and now just getting all the uh, the gears lined up and getting that bearing back installed. So you also want to uh, put just a little bit of uh, this marine grease on the gears and kind of get that worked in as best you can. Just to make sure that it's not too much, but just a good liberal coat applied. So getting into the last, uh, you know, steps here, uh, you, you have this uh, small O-ring that goes onto the end of the uh, gear shaft that comes off the potentiometer. And just a little bit extra protection trying to keep um, things from coming in around the uh, the hole and the end of the, the case there. So, so when you put this case on and you, you, know, you make sure all the gears are meshed up, make sure everything's lined up and you just kind of take your time, work it slowly in there. You don't want to put too much pressure. Um, you know, if things aren't lined up perfectly, you just kind of, you know, take your time, push them on. And eventually it'll snap into place and, um, and then that might, but you'll make sure you're not doing any damage to anything inside. And so what here is just taking a, uh, servo horn and making sure that the, uh, gears do spin freely. So, uh, you know, wasn't, um, sure what I was going to get into with build, having, you know, build your own servo kit. It wasn't near as bad as I thought. Um, you know, I thought maybe I was going to be doing a lot of soldering on the circuit boards and motors and stuff, but uh, it was just a little bit of assembly, and it really does seem like a pretty good kit. I think it's going to work really well. I'm uh, looking forward to getting it onto a truck. A lot of other things in the future. Until then, we'll see you on the rocks.